That's right, I'm making lasagna. I've already cooked up the lasagna pasta. I'm finishing up the sauce. All the meat is in there, all the vegetables are in there. There's some chicken stock and water, wine, olive oil. I'm gonna top it off with this jarred sauce. Normally I do this from whole tomatoes, but this is kind of a quick version. Today I want to show you guys the number one reason why I believe people love this lasagna. The girls love it, it's their number one request. Judy loves it. And Mama, this was probably her favorite dish and it all comes down to bechamel. That's right. Most people, they use ricotta, parmesan mix or something like that. I like to do bechamel. I don't know if it's traditional or not, but it makes all the difference. And I've done a lot of lasagna videos, lasagna vlogs. I have a proper lasagna recipe tutorial, but today I'm just gonna take you step by step through the bechamel. The basic bechamel, it's flour, it's milk. I've got four cups of milk, half a cup of flour, and then butter. I'm gonna be using seven tablespoons. If you guys see the measurements are right there on the side, I'm just gonna cut at seven. And then this is really the bechamel. And then for flavor enhancers, I've got actual nutmeg that I will grate into it just a little bit. Salt and white pepper because white pepper is gonna hide in that white sauce a little better. And then what I do for lasagna is I top it off with Parmesan cheese, which I'm going to grate and then add into the bechamel at the last minute. One of the reasons why I think most people wouldn't do this is because lasagna already takes a long time because there's different steps. You don't want to be dealing with an extra step. But if you do this, it's going to be a whole different experience. Everyone that's tried this, they say they love it. Their family loves it. So uh, the only thing about bechamel is it's a little touchy. It takes a while to learn how to cook it. So I'm going to go through every little detail right now and show you the secret to my lasagna. So I'm gonna start off with the cheese. It doesn't matter what order. I'm just gonna grate, I wanna say about at least one cup of Parmesan cheese. Now normally when you're doing a bechamel, you do not put Parmesan cheese into it, but because I'm doing this for lasagna, I would layer in Parmesan or mozzarella anyways into the dish. This just helps me to skip a step. Now I will add shredded mozzarella, which I'll shred later, but when I get the Parmesan in there. And then it makes the bechamel so delicious. These measurements I'm giving you is enough for one large size lasagna, but if you have leftover bechamel, you can totally put it on sandwiches. I, sometimes I put it on an omelet in the morning. It's so versatile. You can make a small dish out of it, maybe a, a like a white sauce pasta. I'm using this flexible cutting board today because of this reason. Bam, you want it really finely shredded because you want it to melt really easily. Okay, one more thing I'm gonna do is get this pan nice and warmed up. I'm just using a medium sized pot, depending on how much bechamel, but for these measurements, this size is gonna be good. This is what, I wanna say it's like four quarts maybe. Medium, medium, low heat, just to get it warmed up because the first ingredient is about to go in Butter, if you don't know, here's these measurements here in tablespoons, you're gonna put seven. If you put more, like eight, it's not gonna hurt nobody. So I just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cut it right down the middle. First step is to melt this. Oh, that's too hot. You don't want it to bubble right away like that, that's okay. I'm just gonna let it slowly melt. You don't want too many bubbles because you don't want to burn this. You don't want it to turn brown. And because it's not clarified butter, it will turn brown. I can already kind of see it going, but I turned on the heat just in time. I'm just gonna stir this a little bit. As this is just about melted fully, I'm gonna turn up the heat to about medium. So now I'm okay with bubbles starting to form or it to start to boil. Cause the next step is the flour. I've got a half a cup of flour. And not only am I gonna incorporate the flour into the butter, I kinda of wanna cook the flour through. All right, so everything's all melted right now. I'm gonna turn up the heat quite high, maybe medium high. You're gonna see it's gonna start bubbling and boiling. So it's starting to bubble. You can even hear it. I'm gonna throw in the flour. What you're doing here is cooking out the rawness of the flour. 
When it starts smelling like buttered toast, you're on your way. With bechamel, you really want to be present and paying attention the whole time. If you burn this, it's gonna change the whole flavor profile of the bechamel. Now it will turn a slight, I wanna call it golden brownish color, but you don't want it to turn brown and you definitely don't want it to burn. As you see it cooking the flour, I would turn down the heat just so slightly. I'm on a medium high, just stirring, stirring, stirring. Woo, that smells good. I actually want it to turn just a little bit, the color on the edges, I can see it's turning to that brownish color coming through. I've turned down the heat just a little bit. So what I do is I actually turn this, all right, kind of move it back and forth a little bit. I'm getting ready to add the milk. Oh yeah, and now I really smell that buttered toast smell and it's telling me it's ready to go. Now I'm gonna keep the heat on medium high, but one thing I like to do, I move it off to the side when I'm ready to put the milk in because I don't want it to sizzle too much. This is where you gotta be real careful. You see that color? It's definitely the right color now. That's the color I'm looking for. I'm using cold milk. I hear from people different philosophies, but I'm gonna use cold milk because it's the easiest way to do this. Putting in about a third of the milk. And at this point, you really gotta keep stirring. This first part, you're just incorporating the milk with that, they call it a roux. The, flour butter mixture. It's on a medium heat right now. And you could change to a whisk here. I'm gonna use the wooden spatula just for a little longer. There we go, there we go. Moving in smaller circle movements with this wooden spatula. Now I'm gonna keep the heat on medium for right now, but I'm gonna start adding in milk. Cause it's cooking. Now, when I learned how to do this off that YouTube video, the guy keeps stirring and he's breaking it up with this wooden spatula. This is one reason you want to use this versus a whisk because the whisk can't really stand up to it. I'm going to go ahead and add in a whole nother third. In fact, it's going to be maybe almost half of it. I'm showing you the quick version. The longer version takes more time. This, believe it or not, is a quicker version. Okay, now I'm going to move to the whisk. Stirring, stirring, stirring. You see it's clumpy, you don't want that. So you're trying to stir it right away. Now it's low and slow. The reason I'm using the whisk, I'm constantly stirring is number one, I don't want any one part to cook more than the other parts of the bechamel. And secondly, I don't want any clumps. So I'm trying to whisk it all out, back and forth, back and forth. That's gonna just help it move. I do see some clumps, small clumps, but they're still there. So I'm constantly moving them, constantly moving them. So there's different ratios for bechamel in terms of your butter, flour, and milk measurements. This is specifically for a lasagna bechamel. I err on the side of a little bit more runny versus silky, smooth, and thick because I'm gonna add that Parmesan. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the milk. Let's add it all in. Now if you do it the way the pros do it, it's little by little by little, but I don't find that it makes such a big difference. One reason lasagna, Parmesan, bechamel is more forgiving is because you're gonna put it into a dish that has all kinds of other textures, so it's not as big of a deal. Now what you're gonna do is keep it on a medium low heat and just let it sit and bubble. It's going to thicken over the course of the next five minutes or so. You don't have to stir at every moment, but I would say stir at least every 30 seconds. Do not forget about your bechamel, especially if the heat is on, which it is. I'm not just stirring to get the clumps out at this point because there really aren't that many clumps. It's just to make sure it doesn't scorch or burn at the bottom. This is where I add the nutmeg. If you've got jarred nutmeg, that totally works fine. I like the fresh stuff. In this one, I don't put that much. A little goes a long way. And then you knock it. Oh, that transformed already. Just that small, tiny bit of nutmeg. Then some salt, definitely add salt. 
Last but not least, before I turn off the heat and add the cheese, white pepper. I mentioned this earlier. When you use white pepper, especially pre-ground stuff, because it's even more white than this, because it get it way finer, that's gonna hide in the sauce. Not that I'm worried, since it is going into a stack of other ingredients. It's just a habit now. And I do like the sharpness. I like the sharp flavor of white pepper compared to black pepper, so that's my preference. I can tell the thickness is there. I'm gonna turn off the heat now. It's good to go. I don't know how important this is, but I'm gonna add the cheese. But you only add the cheese when you're all done with the heat. Tell me, chefs, is that the proper way to do it? I have a new technique for my sauce, so if you wanna learn, let me know in the comments. Let me know as well if you've tried my lasagna recipe. This bechamel is the right consistency. They say the, the best way to know is when you can do this. Stick a wooden spatula into your sauce when you like that. And it stays there. We're gonna add the Parmesan cheese, little by little, not too much, and mix, mix, mix. A little bit, a little bit, a little, 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 little. little at a time. I mentioned this earlier, but the heat is off. There's enough residual heat in the bechamel. Remember, you have to do a little bit at a time, not all. There you go. To, exactly. You want to give it a chance to melt. But there's enough residual heat in the mm -hmm. pot and the bechamel to melt everything. So what you're going for. As it cools down, it's going to thicken as well. You don't want it too thick because it's nice to be able to drizzle this over. But, but if it does get it thick, thick, it's not a big deal. But you don't want it too thick. So what I'm going to do though at this point is I'm going to cover this so that it doesn't create a layer at the top. When it's exposed to the air, it'll create a layer. Woo, woo, yeah. Yeah, it's getting thick. Oh my gosh. Thumbs up. How to get the black powder. There we go. It's an extra step. Takes a little bit of extra work, but totally worth it. Wow. That's so good. Guess who helped me too? Mia. Mia helped me today. So. Thank you very much. 